Shrek is one of the most popular and successful movie franchises of all time. It spawned three sequels, a spin-off franchise, TV specials, and even a theme park ride. But at the heart of these projects is a beloved set of characters known all over the world. From the original characters to their radical interpretations of fairy tale classics, the Shrek franchise has left a mark on the worlds of both fantasy and animation. With an interesting cast, we have one question. What if the inhabitants of Far Far Away were the participants in the next Squid Game? In a world of ogres, dragons, and princesses, who would be victorious? Hey guys, I'm Brad with Wicked Binge, and this is Which Shrek Character Would Survive Squid Game? Before we start, let's set a few rules. Like every other version of Squid Game we've done, we want the characters to be put on an even playing field. As a result, no characters will be allowed weapons, items, magic, or anything like that. We also want to set things clear as to who will be included in our roster. We'll only be including characters from the four Shrek movies and its spin-off, Puss in Boots. All right, it's time to introduce our contestants. Competing in today's Squid Game is Shrek, Fiona, Donkey, Puss in Boots, Lord Farquaad, Prince Charming, Rumpelstiltskin, Fairy Godmother, The Dragon, Gingerbread Man, The Big Bad Wolf, Pinocchio, Robin Hood, Brogan, The Pied Piper, Arthur, Merlin, King Harold, Queen Lillian, Kitty Softpaws, Humpty Dumpty, Doris, Snow White, Thelonious, and Captain Hook. The characters have been chosen and the rules are set. The only thing left to do is start the games. Our first game of the day is the iconic Red Light Green Light. Red Light Green Light is relatively simple, even by Squid Game standards. The player must get across the field within a certain amount of time, but come to a complete stop when they're told to. Failure to perform either of these will result in a quick elimination. It can be a nerve-wracking game, but there are a few we think will pass it with ease. Both Puss and Kitty Southpaws would do very well. Cats are extremely nimble and precise creatures, and these are attributes both characters have shown continuously throughout their adventures. As strange as it is to say, we also think Big Bad Wolf has what it takes to make it out of the game. He's always lying around, so any chance to take things slow would be a great opportunity for him. Unfortunately, not everyone will make it out. The first character we have on the chopping block is Shrek's noble steed, Donkey. Donkey is a loudmouth who struggles often with listening to directions. Just take a look at how he is in the castle in the first movie. As a result, he has to be our pick for the first elimination. We're also going to go ahead and say Pinocchio is eliminated. Pinocchio is an anxious puppet, and this trait will almost certainly spell certain doom. Our first game has come to an end with only two deaths. Uh, don't get too comfortable though, as things are only going to get worse. Enter the second game of the day, the Honeycomb Challenge. This game, much like the first, has a pretty straightforward set of rules. Each player is given a cookie. They're instructed to carve a specific shape out of it, but it must be done without the cookie breaking. Patience is key, as well as a set of steady hands. Without even one of these elements, the player could run the risk of losing the entire game. Once again, Puss in Boots would pass this game with little trouble. His sword fighting skills show that he can definitely be precise. Similarly, Prince Charming would also pass. He's not as precise as Puss, but with how comfortable he seems when brandishing a sword, he at least has a pair of steady hands. The Dragon would also do well. She doesn't have steady hands, but she is at least patient. You'd have to be if you waited almost your entire life to attack a knight inside a castle, right? You know, we could see her being one of the contestants who try to lick the shape out of the cookie. The first to go is probably going to be a surprise to everyone, but it's Shrek. Shrek is easy to irritate and very stubborn. Attributes that you don't want in a game like this. Whether your parents like it or not, I am an ogre! Just can't see Shrek making it out. We also think King Harold would be taken out. He suffers from a lot of the same character flaws as Shrek, such as being incredibly stubborn. I mean, you expect me to give my blessing? We just can't see Harold making it far. Snow White is our third elimination. While she suffers from stubbornness like the prior two, she's also impatient. She'd likely try to find an easy way towards victory, which will come back to cost her greatly. Captain Hook also sees his demise, and we think you all know the reason why. You can't excel at a game that requires steady hands when you have a hook for a hand. While it's true that Hook has used his hook hand better than anyone would imagine, in a game where precision is more important than anything else, we don't think it would help his chances. Alright, the second game has concluded. 
So it's time to move on to what might be the most intense and brutal part of the entire event, the Midnight Brawl. This brawl happens between the second and third games, and it goes exactly how you would think. A giant fight breaks out at midnight, resulting in the deaths of several players. There are two major ways you could survive this battle. First, you could take an active role in the fight itself, if you're strong enough and can hold your own. If strength isn't on your side, however, then you can always hide out until the fighting comes to an end. Realistically, a lot of the characters in the Shrek universe can actually defend themselves. Fiona, Doris, and even Queen Lillian have all displayed excellent hand-to-hand -hand combat skills, so they have no issue of making out alive. Big Bad Wolf is an interesting character because he could go either way. He could fight others to the death or just sleep during the entire thing. Rumpelstiltskin and the Fairy Godmother aren't ones to fight, but we could see them silently maneuvering out of trouble. They could form alliances and manipulate others to help them out. One character that we think could do exceptionally well is Brogan. Not only is he an excellent fighter, but his experience as the leader of a resistance movement could be invaluable in helping him strategize on how to deal with the fighting. Thelonious has some great experience as one of Farquaad's guards, so he would survive. Although Shrek has characters that can throw hands, there are definitely some who are weak. One of those characters is Lord Farquaad, and this cost him by becoming our first elimination of the brawl. By no means is he good at fighting, and quite frankly, we think he's far too vain to attempt to hide out during the battle. Humpty Dumpty also falls, mostly because he'd be an easy target for other characters to pick on. Make no mistake, this is one egg that's getting cracked. The gingerbread man would also be an easy target. His short stature will almost always lead to him getting crushed beneath the boot of a larger opponent. Robin Hood has some fighting skills, but we think he'd lose just by failing to measure up to how strong the others are. If you get beat up seconds after first appearing, then you definitely wouldn't have what it takes to survive this. Our last loss is Merlin. Without his magical powers to fall back on, Merlin is little more than a helpless old man. The only way he can make it out of this is if he allied with a stronger player. But we don't foresee him having any luck with that. The bloody brawl has come to an end, leaving only 14 left as we prepare for the third game, Tug of War. In the Squid Game series, Tug of War is played between two teams, but for this scenario, we'll be doing things a little differently. We'll instead be looking at individual characters and judge their chance of surviving based on two key factors. One, they have to have a decent amount of physical strength. Two, and far more importantly, they must be a good team player. Everyone must pitch in during a game like this, and failing to do so could very well not just cost one person, but an entire team. As we mentioned while covering the brawl, a lot of Shrek characters are already pretty physical. As a result, we'll look at characters who also do well at teamwork. Brogan would again excel here due to his experience in the ogre resistant movement. We also think Fiona, Puss, and Lillian would succeed on account of how often they've had to work with others. There are a lot of characters still standing who could pass, but a few falter in one or both of the areas needed to attain victory. One of those characters is Arthur. Although he can work in a team, he's not nearly strong enough to be much of help in a game like this. While Arthur can play well in teams, the same cannot be said for the fairy godmother. She's an untrustworthy person, and because of this, we have trouble believing she'd get very far. Rumpelstiltskin isn't a good team player and isn't very strong. It should come as no surprise that he's next up on the elimination list. Lastly, we think the Pied Piper would also fall, and for mostly the same reasons as Rumpelstiltskin. He's only in it for himself and doesn't have a good physical presence. We're moving closer and closer to the end as we now discuss what is arguably the most pivotal game of them all, the Marble Game. In this game, the rules will vary from player to player. All that must happen is that one player has to obtain their teammate's marbles. Whether they acquire them in a guessing game or something else is entirely up to the players. This means the players in this round really do need to have a good head on their shoulders. Anything and everything must be anticipated if they're to have any chance of surviving. Once again, Brogan will survive in advance. He's a good leader and strategist, so he'd have no problem analyzing his opponents. He could even take advantage and use their weaknesses against them. We also think Kitty Softpaws has a good chance of winning. She's persuasive and good at getting exactly what she wants. 
Manipulation can certainly be important to win this game, so she's at least got that down. The first character to go is Thelonious. Thelonious fails ultimately because he's, well, not that smart. Come on, if you can't remember how many fingers represent the number three, how are you supposed to pass a game like this? We, never dream alone. we also think Prince Charming would be eliminated. Like, he might be evil, but he's nowhere near as bright as his mother was. Don't think we forgot about how well Pinocchio toyed with him. Next is the Big Bad Wolf, who won't be making it out because of his brains. The Big Bad Wolf has never seemed to be the sharpest tool in the shed, and we see this as a weakness others will undoubtedly exploit. Finally, we're saying goodbye to Queen Lillian. She's been manipulated a few times, and unfortunately for her, we have our doubts. Only six remain as we head towards the penultimate game, Glass Stepping Stones. A game like Glass Stepping Stones revolves around luck more than anything else. Here, the player must navigate across a series of glass steps, but some are built to break when touched, making the journey more difficult. Players could wait things out and watch their opponents try to uncover which pieces are which, or they could take a chance and trust their instincts. The first elimination here is the dragon. Dragon's never been the best at navigating terrain, so we unfortunately think this game will be her undoing. Doris will also fall. Though this princess is a skilled fighter, she's far from an expert strategist. This weak spot in her character will ultimately seal her fate. Brogan, after doing very well over the last few trials, will also be eliminated. Brogan has dealt with a lot of obstacles over the years, but nothing would likely have him ready for this. And while ogres can be a lot of things, we think delicate isn't exactly one of them. Fiona is the last elimination before we reach our final two. Like Brogan, we think she'd be eliminated due to not being able to have the precision needed in a game like this. All right, time for the final two. We've made it to the big finale, The Squid Game. In the TV series, the titular Squid Game starts as a recreation of the children's game it is named after. However, it soon breaks down into a violent fight to the bitter end. More than anything else, the players must be good fighters if they are to become the victor. The Squid Game will come down to a battle between our last two contestants, Puss in Boots and Kitty Softpaws. With Puss and Kitty, both of these characters share a lot of similar traits. They have the nimbleness and acrobats of a feline, which help both survive the Glass Stepping Stones game. Both are good at manipulation, and of course, both feel right at home with the sword. While no weapons are permitted during the game, it shows that they have an understanding of fighting that's deeper than most characters in the Shrek universe. So, who wins? Well, Kitty is very talented and even outsmarts Puss throughout his spin-off movie. However, that's kind of the problem. While Kitty has only appeared in one film, Puss has appeared in four. He's fought many opponents, from guards to other fairy tale villains, so he has much more experience than Kitty. Because of how much Puss has accomplished on screen compared to what Kitty has, we don't think she's even comparable to him. Not only that, but in the second Shrek, the king sought out an assassin who was the best at his game. Now, remind us, who is that again? As a result of his excellent combat skills, precision, and overall experience as a master assassin, the winner of the game is Puss in Boots. All right, guys, that's it. Let us know in the comment section if you agree with our ranking and tell us what we should cover next. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge more of our videos. But most importantly, stay wicked.